everyone. Welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast. This week brought to you by Hymns and Squarespace. There's that one. There's the other one. I'm Gus. I'm Chris. I'm Becca. I'm Barbara. And I'm, I'm Gus. Bernie. Oh, they didn't do the thing. They were going to do me and then they were going to do you. You stepped in. I know. Like, Gus and then Bernie. It's oh, because like I'm the last one? We're going to do it like normal. We'll and do then people will be like, oh, there's Bernie. We went <laughs> so over I'm it. not on the podcast today, but I thought I would hang out on the side for a second because there's something I forgot to mention on the podcast last week. Does anyone have anything right out of the gate? Because I, I don't want to derail the Apparently you do, so. Yeah. No, no, you go for it. You guys you saw this article the about the former Cosby Show actor yeah. who was shamed for having a job? Yes. <laughs> oh, dare he yeah. Do you know this? Oh, yeah. the wasn't he like a... Chef? He, at Trader Thompson Joe's. Copy? Oh, oh. He was bagging groceries. groceries, I believe, at Trader Joe's. I think that's what it was. And a bunch of media outlets in the first, you know, the first cycle of this little news thing, um, they they all reported like, oh, my gosh, can you believe actor? Where is he now? Actor on Hard Times or whatever. And it was just like, but the immediate reaction from the public on like social media was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. Why? Yeah. This guy has a job. Right. He's, Trying to make a working. living. Yeah. Yeah. Also, like, don't act like isn't it a false idea that actors get paid these ridiculous amounts of money? Like, if you're just on some show years and years ago, are then you, you're he not was a the, millionaire. Necessarily. He was on the Cosby Show, which is obviously no longer on the air. So I think those funds dried up. There yeah. goes that syndication money. Yeah, yeah. No, that's not coming back. Probably not. No, that one's probably not coming back. Yeah, yeah. I just and feel like it's an over exaggerated idea yeah. that every single person in show business and and TV is. You know, multi millionaires. Right. It's like inconsistent work. You We're have pitch to a show constantly idea, you work to get the next job. Yeah. What's your show? Going to take an increase in technology, but I think the Cosby Library, the Cosby Show, we get quantum computing on has it, has such an enormous value to it because it's there and they produced it for a number of years. You can reboot it and just digitally replace Bill Cosby with Alf. If you do Bing Crosby. <laughs> <laughs> then you just make it the Crosby show. That's it. Just one letter. <laughs> right. It's the kids like, will love that one. Yeah, yeah. It's, to it's totally the same show. Do you guys, what was it? Do you remember years ago? I, I can't remember what it was. Was it Elvis? Or I remember they used a dead celebrity. They used their image inserted into a modern commercial. Was it was it, a Coke commercial, I want to say. Singing in the Rain. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They did and something that, with Audrey Hepburn, too, I think. But I think the first one is the one you're talking about. Um, it was Gene Kelly. Yeah, thank you. Or Fred Astaire, I'm sorry. Fred, I, was, I was about to say Gene Hackman, so no, no. I was going to be way the fuck off. It was, it was I knew Fred, it was wrong. I think it was, think it was Fred Astaire. No, yeah, that Gene was like Hackman's the first time that they, <laughs> Gene they did that. Gene from Singing in the Rain. <laughs> yeah, but remember what a, what a hubbub that was? It seems like now, eh, like that thing seems more commonplace well, I now. think that set the precedent for you have to pay these estates and, you know, for figuring out what the rights are and who gets paid in order to sign off on stuff like that. I feel like that. that's super creepy. When I'm dead, what am I going to I don't want people putting me in commercials and stuff like that. That seems weird. Well, it's crazy, too, because what was the... It was Coke, so that was around when he was alive. But theoretically, you could die, and you could then be used as an endorsement for something that didn't exist while you were alive. Yeah, that seems strange. That if they strange. use my likeness to endorse something after I'm dead, they better just use my animated corpse. <laughs> Dear Lord. <laughs> <laughs> like what, they hook up strings? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. Weekend at Bernie's style. They don't need to do that. I, I'm pretty sure at some point in the very near future, we're going to see uh, entirely digital stars. We're going to like to Max well, Hedrum. I mean, we're already seeing Max it. Max Hedrum, get come on. on. It By the way, exists. not 100 digital. That's a dude in a prosthetic. Wasn't there, like a, there's an he, Instagram he was, account? He was digital that was in the a show, girl. though. Oh, yeah, that that's completely so was how? But she true. looked really human, and so she had something like oh, it reminds me of that movie followers. Simone. She looked oh. human, so she's like Gus. Yeah, she would, but not <laughs> not uh, quite. I, Just kidding, gosh, you don't look human. I went and I saw <laughs> 2001 last week. They were they were playing uh, they were playing in the theater at the Alamo Village, mm -hmm. and uh, you you mentioned Hal, which made me think about it. And if you haven't seen that movie in a long time, Hal is only in like half that movie. Right. Hal is only on the back half of that film. The first half of the film is really slow. I think it's like 30 minutes before the first line of dialogue is spoken. And the movie, it's only two and a half hours, but I guess it was really long for the time. So while they were playing at the Alamo, there was an intermission. So like on screen, it says intermission. And then the lights come up and like, oh, that's weird. I guess they have an intermission. And I, when the lights came up, I realized I was in a row with a family. There was a mother and a father and their three kids. And their three kids were all like tweens. You know, mm -hmm. They weren't quite teenagers yet. And the lights came up and I heard one of the kids lean over to the father and, and say, this is the most boring movie in the world. <laughs> and then the other kid, like uh, another kid leaned over and interjected and was like, 
I never realized science could be so boring. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> and uh, so, like, uh, the mother got up with them and, like, left with all three kids. And the dad just, just, just sitting there waiting for the intermission. Did they not come back? They didn't come back. They were gone. Oh, man. They left. Well, we, they might. They, the kids might not know what an intermission was. Yeah. <laughs> the parents were probably like, well, let's go back in the theater and finish watching the movie. Like, we just finished. The lights went up. And they're like, yeah. nope, that's an intermission. When have you ever seen an intermission? In anything in else? In any other movie? I, I, yeah, I guess like I if you're going to a play or something, which Quentin those kids Tarant probably hadn't. Yeah, the Hateful yeah. Eight. Hateful but eight that was a special screening. Okay. Like, you know. I didn't, yeah, I didn't see an intermission in my screening of Hateful Eight. Did you go to the original, like the, the big the, the, the film one? Sydney millimeter. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Who was it that smashed the guitar in that movie? Huh? Was it Kurt Russell? Oh, it was Kurt Russell, yeah. Yeah, they had a, uh, someone was playing a guitar and they had a guitar from like the 1800s. Like a very rare guitar. There's only a few left in the world. And there's a scene where they smash it, but they obviously had a prop so they could play. So he smashed it. He grabbed the wrong one or uh. during the wrong take, grabbed it and smashed it. And so there's an actress in the foreground. Who's the actress in that? Jennifer Jason Lee. Jennifer Jason Lee. Thank you very much. I'm kind of terrible with names. You can see her reaction because she knows. And her reaction is like a genuine reaction to him smashing this super rare guitar. Holy shit. Yeah. That's yeah. Rough. They were supposed to get up to the point of the smash. I think they're supposed to cut. Then they were going to go in and take the the stand-in guitar, but no one told <laughs> no one. Kurt Russell. <laughs> oh, Did he have man. to pay for it? Like, how does that I'm work? Kurt sure Russell, dude. You're not, we can send him an invoice? Get, me out, get out of here. Uh, yeah, it was a 145-year-old guitar. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's Now he's trouble. bagging groceries at Trader Joe's. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you just know that somebody, like, cared for that for decades. Oh, yeah. it, was, like, it was on loan from a museum. Oh! oh. <laughs> We should it, do a movie it, with the Mona Lisa and smash the real it, Mona Lisa. E even worse, it was a one of a kind guitar. It was one of a kind. It was one of a kind. Not zero. Of a I kind mean, it now. still is, right? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's in pieces. Thousand of one kind. <laughs> wow, that sucks, dude. That sucks. Yeah. You know, but it's funny because that 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 guitar, honestly, would have existed for probably another couple hundred years in a museum. Nobody would know about it, but the fact that, th that this actor picked it up and smashed it, now everybody knows about the guitar. Well, now there's a record of it. Like, you can see it in the movie. Yeah. Right. Now it's just at Planet Hollywood. You can go see it in it's the archives. Just <laughs> Are they still Planet Hollywood? I don't know. I feel like there probably has yeah, to be at least one in Japan or something, right? Yeah, Seems. casino in uh, Vegas. Planet oh, Hollywood. yeah. 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 That, that casino always smells like a sewer. A lot does it smell like that to anybody? I'm leaving. I don't think I've ever been. Bye, 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 Bernie. Bernie. I'll miss you. London. See you in London. See, I mean, now that we're back. Oh, London. yeah. This, this podcast is oh. pre-taped. I don't think we said that. We're not live. Oh, right. Yeah. We should have said that. We're Most of us are in London. No, only half of us are in London. Half of us. Yeah. Oh, oh Bernie saw the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> is it Home Slice? Yeah, it's Home Slice. It is Home Slice. They got here on time. Thanks. Ooh, that, Thanks uh, that story reminded me, you bring up the Instagram account of the potential fake person. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever hear this theory that Avril Lavigne died? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, and that yeah. there's like a fake person pretending to be Avril Lavigne? Yeah. Yes. Who was perpetuating that? It, was, it started out as a joke, right? And I think so. But then it turned into like some crazy conspiracy theory. That yeah, it's because her appearance changed dramatically. Yeah. At and one like point, right? Certain things about her personality and stuff changed Just as the well. The Lyme disease. <laughs> I feel like that happens. Yeah. I every, think so. Every I, now and then, like it happened with Paul McCartney with the Beatles. Like people claim that Paul McCartney died, and there was a replacement Paul McCartney. I don't, that, I don't know. The one that had the if you played Revolution number nine backwards, it said "Turn me on, dead man," and that created this whole myth I, that I one of them was dead. Like that, yeah. yeah. There was also that that photo of Melania Trump. Coming off of a... Oh, where she had a doppelganger. Where it looked like a completely different person. Like, the face was different, but she was in the same clothes. So mm -hmm. people thought, like, someone else was on the plane, like a doppelganger or some type of body double. Queen Amidala. <laughs> 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 it was Kiara Knightley. Hmm. That was who it was. It's Melania, but with a very clenched jaw. Yeah. No, I, think, I don't know why that is, that people always want to look for a weird conspiracy theory. Like, even where there is none. Like, who... Why, why, why would they hide if something happened to Avril Lavigne? Is there like some person who stands to make a ton of money by Avril Lavigne still being alive? Maybe or like maybe Avril Lavigne herself isn't dead, but hired someone to be her. What? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you know. Maybe she just doesn't like have you ever seen the movie Megamind? No, I never saw it. Oh, well, the superhero in that movie fakes his own death because he just like doesn't want to be doesn't want to do it anymore. Mm. There could be a thing too where it's like if a musician like a famous musician was really popular back in like back in the day or something but they'd fallen on hard times and 
and uh, their music wasn't selling anymore, so they fake their own death so that their music sales will skyrocket so yeah. they can still enjoy the money while they're still alive. Yeah, but they're not faking they're still alive, yeah. though. Yeah, 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 it's the opposite. Okay, yeah, never mind. Yeah. Tupac Shakur. Mm. No, I don't know. Okay, that was another one. Yeah, Machiavelli. Or, uh, yeah. Then the Elvis. People refused to believe Elvis was dead for a long time. Yeah. He I mean, we saw him in Vegas. Yeah, that's he, true. he renewed your vows. <laughs> he, he was right? there. He yeah. was totally there. He was in Vegas and Atlantic City and New York at some point. All at the same time, weirdly enough. He's been all over. Are there any conspiracy theories that you do believe in? Uh, I think that the moon is made of cheese and uh, they just won't tell us. Mm. That's because that's the cheese industry doesn't want the, the bottom falling out of, uh, mm. of, yeah. uh, of their cheese. And you know who the spokesperson for cheese is? Avril Lavigne. I thought, oh you were say, I thought you were going to say Jesus. Oh, God. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> You're going to say Gus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, are there any you believe in? It's going to sound terrible, but when I was younger and uh, there was this documentary that got released on YouTube called Loose Change. Oh, about yeah. About the 9-11 attacks. There was a brief period of time where I was like, oh, my God. This oh, no. is all a conspiracy theory. I thought Loose Change I, was... Awful. <laughs> well, I was I guess you were, young. I was young. very, very young. Yeah. I, when I watched that, I think I was like 13, mm. 14 maybe? No, nothing. Well, not, not nothing. Few things make me feel as old as whenever September 11th comes around. Yeah. And I read like posts on Reddit or people talking about it. They're like, yeah, I remember it. I was in fifth grade. I was like, motherfucker. <laughs> I was 23. I was, I was at my, I was working. I was at my job. I was in high school. Freshman in high school, and I remember my friend came up to me and was like, "Did you hear? That someone blew up the government. Like that's what they <laughs> the like, government. That's what how they described it. It's like someone blew up the government. Well, I was when like, you're that what? young, it's hard to really conceive yeah. what happened. It was just like something had happened. Yeah. I was in the seventh grade, and I remember they called they're, they're, the wait. They're, 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 they're doing the thing I said. That, oh, they're in school talking uh, about how young we were. <laughs> yeah, I was in the seventh grade. I remember they called the sixth, seventh, and eighth graders into the gymnasium to like tell them all what happened. Uh, because, like, I guess we were the older kids at the school, so they felt like we could handle it. And they're like, if you want, parents could come pick you up. And I was Hell just yeah. really confused. I was but, like, but, okay. And I'll you were Canadian. Yeah. Canadian, but also I went to a private Jewish school, so I think there's a little bit of kind of worry that we might be a target for something mm. just because you're a private school mm. and you never know what. Pe yeah, people didn't know. And I, I think the, like I said, I was already an adult, so I, I felt like I had a different perspective on it than uh than than kids who were uh at the time and the thing that always strikes me the thing that makes me remember the day the most is when it, if you watch like uh, a clip or you watch the segment from the howard stern show when it happened on that day where it's like it's just a normal howard stern show then all of a sudden they hear something they're like oh that's weird and then it's like do we make fun of this was it an accident and then as they find out more it's like it becomes more and more serious it's like oh shit no like Something crazy just happened. Oh, it's it's really like alive. Yeah, yeah, it's really interesting to see. Like, because uh, you think of the Stern Show and you think of one thing, and it's like, and then it just totally goes in a different direction. I was never into the Stern Show. Same. It's, I mean, I, I was never. I, I listened to to some, and in the, especially in the early days of the podcast, I, I listened more because I was always curious as to how someone could produce so much content on a daily basis. And it's like, what is he doing to make his show, and how does he do it after so many years? I don't get those people who who do podcasts or radio shows every single day. Like I listen to uh, ninety three point seven in the morning sometimes, which is like Dudley and Bob, yeah. and they get up at like four in the morning every day to start the show at probably five thirty or six, and they talk for three or four hours, and they do it every day. Yeah. Do they play music? No. Oh. Well, they have like commercial breaks and stuff like that, but. And in it's fact, a lot of banter. It, and yeah. they've done it for a long time because the morning of September 11th, when my alarm went off, it was a radio alarm. It was 93.7. It was Dudley and Bob. Really? And when my radio alarm went off, I heard them. They were like, uh, it appears a small plane like a Cessna flew into the tower. And I turned it off and I was like, that's weird. And in my head, I thought it was the UT tower. Mm. And the apartment oh. I was living in at the time, I had a balcony where I could see where UT was. So I yeah. went out to my balcony and I looked at the campus and I was like, tower's fine. I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh. And then, like, I, I tried to use the internet, but, like, all the websites were down. Yeah, CNN just had, like, four bullets. Yeah, every, like, America under attack. Yeah, it was, then. like, every website was just overloaded. I couldn't load anything. It was Wait. like, well, that sucks. My internet's down. <laughs> like, I didn't find out until I went to work. Wow. That's so like, weird. I got yeah. a phone call on my landline, I remember, telling me to wake up and turn on the TV. Which I turned on my 19-inch CRT. Like, all those memories really dates it. 2001 does not seem like that long ago, but it's so long ago. So long ago.
I, I don't know why. I think I like people who were born in 2000 are now in college. And that to me is so weird. Um, but back to the uh, Howard Stern thing, that's where I first learned what a Sibian was, oh. was from the Howard Stern show. Oh, oh yeah. I watched, how, how did you learn about that, Barbara? I, as a very uh, uh, curious child, I would often look at clips on the internet that were not safe for work and that I probably shouldn't be watching. And that's, uh, I found a clip of some porn star using that thing. And for, I was yeah. that intrigued. in the movie Private Parts? Like, didn't they have a... Yeah. They, for, for, they some, it. for some reason, I thought Barbara was going to say, that's where you learned what queefing was. <laughs> that was the thing that came to mind right away. <laughs> I watched the Howard Stern show on TV as like a kid because it was like sort of like raunchy stuff. It was, yeah. Yeah, it was like a lot of like nudity, but it was all censored. But, you know, as a kid, you, you knew like, what was going on. Yeah, yeah. You could fill in the blank. And there was a lot of like talk about sex and stuff. And I would just, yeah, I was like, this, I can't, this is like on, you're I can't allowed this to on watch TV. It, mm -hmm. But you're yeah. allowed to watch it at the same time. Did y'all ever watch Loveline on MTV? Yeah, I watched that too. I was on that when I was like what? 17. What? Yeah. Um, I had a call, like I called in. I like one night I came home, I was a little drunk, and I submitted a question on their website, and they called me like six months later and they were like, Do you want to be on the show and ask your question? And so Whoa. what was, the what was question? your question? I had read about some device that like creates a vacuum on your boobs and actually generates <laughs> breast tissue and I just <laughs> like it was just the most like obvious thing that I could think of to ask them to bait them into putting me on the show and what's uh, it called and where could you buy it I think it's called a brava and it probably doesn't a exist what? anymore a brava br brava, <laughs> brava. Oh. um but yeah they just they basically told me that it was a fake article or an ad that was disguised as, as an article. Yeah. I'd read about it in a magazine. It was not. It was a legit article, but they were very dismissive of me. How dare but they? what I didn't anticipate was how many people in my school watched that show. Oh, God. And, you know, I'm from a really small town. So when it said Becca 17, Carrizo Springs, Texas, they knew exactly, exactly who it was. So the next day, like my geometry teacher called me out. And, <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my oh, yeah. God. No. It so was, do you, th funny. do you think you could find that clip? On I've tried. I'm I looking right on... now. I'm trying furiously <laughs> So I remember I had it on VHS for a long time and it disappeared. The tape disappeared. I don't know what happened to it. Uh, but Loveline was a nightly show. Mm -hmm. So there's a shit ton of content out there to the point that I think people don't care to archive so, it. Yeah. Uh, all I found is a listing of the article, I know, of the episode name, like guest host, date, and some database. We have to find that now. Yeah. I, I would yeah. love to yeah, find it. I can't find it. I think it was it was in the year in the year two thousand. Man, um, that, so today we're we're pre-taping the the Apple presentation with the new iPhones just wrapped up a little while ago. They use a word, they repeatedly use a word in their in their press conferences that drives me crazy. Beautiful, unparalleled, no. uncompromising, uncompromising. Oh. Yeah. How can a phone be uncompromising? <laughs> like, what does that mean? Like that doesn't, it's like, it's such a garbage word. It's such a garbage word to describe a piece it of technology. It sounds fancy. That's why they use it. It's like, if it sees you in a back alley, is it going to knife you? <laughs> it's like, the phone is uncompromising. I think, I mean, I guess they're saying like they didn't make any compromises. No, no, no. They don't say they didn't make compromises. They say the phone is uncompromising. Well, I mean, isn't it uncompromising? It's not going to compromise with you <laughs> guess, at all. Yeah. It is what it is. <laughs> No communication whatsoever. Yeah, I don't know. It was just a whole bunch of... Yeah, that's a platitude. That's a nice one. Yeah, it's just... A, and then the whole thing, just like, it's a bunch of bullshit. I mean... They are you going to get one, though? No. A new iPhone? You're not going to get a new I, iPhone? I, I, I did not see anything in that presentation that made me think that's better than Even mine. the uncompromising phone? I think they even described my phone as uncompromising last year. Last year, probably. Yeah. Now it compromises with <laughs> iOS 12. I was laughing at the name, though. Now it's the iPhone XS. No, they didn't go with that after all, right? They did. They did? They oh, did. Or, or XS and XS Max. 10S, technically, and 10S Max. I thought they said X. 10. Did they said 10? 10. Okay. Well, just and then the 10R. 10R, yeah. The 10R is like the, the regular. I don't, I don't know why. The, the, I don't think they ever fully explained it. Ret, super Retina? Who knows? It's like the lower. I think the model. R is the yeah. lower. Like yeah. the cheaper model. Yeah. They used to be it's not too confusing now because it used to be like three, four, five, six, you know, like yeah. now it's like Add XL, S's and R's and 2R, P. Well, they really screwed themselves because they skipped nine entirely. Well, they, they still could go back to nine. Although I guess at this point they would have done like an 8S or something, right? They only did they iPhone 10s. Yeah. They got rid, so they didn't announce any new Touch ID phones. It's all Face ID stuff. Yep. 
What's what's eleven gonna be? Is it just gonna be eleven? You think, or you think it's gonna be like? To be the little girl from Stranger Things. You're gonna you're gonna get one of those. It's gonna, gonna be, be the, Millie Bobby Brown. The X plus one, S L T. It's like do that, that when they start over again. Like once they hit the double digits, they have to like re like ah iPhone one. Yeah. <laughs> New <laughs> iPhone one. It's, it's it, there's some companies that just fuck that up. Like I I always think also about Microsoft with the Xbox, Xbox 360, Xbox One. What's yeah. the next one? I mean, come on, guys. Have, have some consistency. Try yeah. it. Xbox box. I don't know. <laughs> X cube. Well, PlayStation's the only one that's ever had any consistency in their hardware re releases, right? Right, but at least Nintendo doesn't number things necessarily. True. Except for the 64. Yeah, but that was describing the hardware, which was important it at wasn't the time. The or the 3DS. In the 360, I wouldn't call that numbered. That was... Just I feel like that's more of a all around a term, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Same thing with the one. I mean, it's obviously not the first Xbox, right? Isn't there? Do you think there's going to be a new Xbox this year? This year? No, no. You don't think so? No, they would have announced that E3. Maybe, oh, that's true. Yeah, maybe 2020. What do you think it's going to be called? I don't know. Early prediction. They're going to call it original Xbox. <laughs> No, they're going to call it PlayStation 6. Xbox 64. The, the Xbox PlayStation 6. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I got... Eric so. dropped them and he said they were okay, but they're not. Are these the ones you dropped? I didn't, I didn't drop any. Okay. They're all bubble. fine. They're I like this okay. microphone now. You the, don't have to yell uh, as yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that. He's got a mic. The safety open. So, uh, you're back now. How long were you, were you out, Becca? Uh, almost four months. It's a long time. Yeah, I took a, an extra month or so to... Spend more time at home, but I kind of came back to work a month ago, working I, from home. Yeah. And this is my first full week back in the office. That's cool, How's man. How's it feel? It's pretty good. It's a lot easier the second time around. Yeah? Yeah. Were we ready to ditch those stupid kids? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it just, it's weird. I feel like I came out of a coma for the most part. Like, everything has changed around here. Yep. There's a new couch. There I, is? I can't sing. Yeah. Last time I was on this. <laughs> you did. There's a new couch. Yeah, it used to be black. <laughs> Weren't you on this last week, too? Yeah. Uh, I didn't pay attention to the couch. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly. There's yeah. a phone charger on your side, too, I think. What? The there's way. a phone charger there? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But in my world, nothing changed. It was the same shit, different day. And that must be so, it's like a time traveling it is, yeah. thing. I feel like I fell into a black hole. With okay. a baby. Yeah, yeah. indeed. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, congrats it, on the kid. Thank you. She's a good baby. She looks exactly like you. Yeah, it's really weird. It's kind of creepy. Not a, not in a bad way. <laughs> in like a, it's just yeah. Sometimes I look down at her. It's like looking in a mirror. Pretty cool. <laughs> Thirty so years ago. How old's uh, Clementine now? Uh, she'll be four next month. Oh, okay, so it's like a four year difference between them. Yeah, three and a half. Three and a half. Like exactly. Oh, yeah. That's mm -hmm. good. It's a, it's a good amount. That's, that's good amount of space. Difference. That's about how far apart my brother and I are. Did Is you ever have any age problems between you and your brother? No. Uh, I kind of never saw him as a peer. I always felt like he was a lot younger than me because the way our birthdays fell, he was four years behind me in school. Mm -hmm. um, but that was really the only thing. I, I think that if that's the worst thing, you look that's down pretty on good. Him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He will always be a baby, yeah. even though he's like 33 years old. Yeah. Yeah, my sister is also four years younger than me. It was the same thing where it's like we were not really ever in the same school. Like, she, I guess we were in the same elementary school for a year or two before I left and like they kept the, the really small kids like on the other end of the school like i never mm -hmm. saw her yeah we, we I, never shared a campus until i took my victory lap at ut mm -hmm. and he was a freshman and i was an I, extra senior I, also last week for the podcast gavin was saying that he was gonna have guests come watch the podcast and so they set up chairs and people came in with him and i was like oh like who are you bringing and he's like oh this is my sister and i was like what What's her name? Liv? Livy? The people in the booth are yeah. saying what? Did that no one Gavin's know that? That was Gavin's sister and her boyfriend who are visiting. And I'm just like, I, you're yeah, so proud. Eric had no idea. Yeah. I knew he had a brother. Yeah, he has yeah, a brother and a sister. There's a, a sister. A sister. <laughs> I know. Obi-Wan was fear, wise fear, to hide. <laughs> furious whispering in the booth yeah. right now. I didn't know that. I, I had no, I, yeah. I don't I know, like, know. would you guys have given them, like, more special treatment if you knew it was related to Gavin? Maybe. maybe yeah, not. probably. <laughs> <laughs> when you talk in that mic, does it go into the recording? Can the yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's hot. It's red hot. Oh, this hot. feels like the voice of God. No, no, it's better. No, That's it's Eric. just Eric. Oh, also, <laughs> it's bad Eric now, and good Eric works at the no. Oh, okay. What, oh, who's yeah. my boss? Neutral Eric? That, that's not existent Eric. <laughs> <laughs> we only deal with people in this building. Okay. There's also Eric Cherry. Oh, yeah. And then it's probably another Eric that we don't know. 
What's yeah. the most common name at Rooster Teeth? Is it Eric? No, I would think it's Michael. like Patrick, Michael? Patrick or John or no, Chris. No, there's John. A, well, there are a lot of Johns. There's a lot of oh. Patricks too. Yes. The, some of the Johns have no H. Yeah, like one? Reisinger. I think he's the only one with no H. Okay. Yeah, he's the weird one. Wait, he's, why does it have an H? So this, oh no, wait, John and d- our the designer John guy, Benson. He's no H too. So the name Jonathan has no H except after oh, the T. But the na- standalone name John has an H. They're two mm. different names. One's a nickname. One's a full name. Yeah. So John Reisinger, that's his birth name. John. J-O-N. Oh, his birthday Wait, was no, John? I think, I think no. he's a Jonathan. I thought it was... I'll ask him right now. Okay. I th- I c- I'm pretty sure his name is just John. What a... I mean, that's possible, too. Yeah. Anything can... I mean, is they're standalone, standalone Beckas. John <laughs> or Jonathan? <laughs> Say, like, birth name or, like, legal name. I'm just gonna ask that. Is your name okay. John or Jonathan? We'll see if he replies. I think he's he's busy right now. He's busy. It's his birthday today on the day we're recording this. Special yeah. John. Yeah. Special, special John. No, no, you can't you can never treat him. I, I I since I don't want anyone going out of their way for me on my birthday, I don't go out of my way for anybody on their <laughs> birthday. I'm getting like, I'm, increasingly anti birthday the older I get. Yeah, like I, I don't want I don't want the attention. It doesn't matter. And I knew when I sat down at lunch, I sat next to Barbara and John, I knew it was his birthday. I intentionally didn't say anything about it. Not even like, hey man, happy birthday. No. Nothing? No. I like intentionally I'm, I'm getting away from telling people happy birthday just because it gets too overwhelming for me yeah like, so much to keep up on i used to check facebook every day like who do i need to talk to i know i used to get john paranoid says, it's john j-o-n J-O. okay mm-hmm. you're right i used to get paranoid about like forgetting to wish people happy birthday and then i would message them a day or two later and be like oh my god i'm so sorry and they're like <laughs> it's no big yeah. deal. But then I know there's some people who get very sensitive. Some people yeah. are super, but like to me, I'm just like I don't know. I don't. I don't remember anyone's birthday. Like that's like across the board. I remember your sister's birthday, July seventh. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh, because is that my birthday? That's your that's birthday. That's right. Okay. <laughs> I was like, there's some reason you, you remember, but I don't. Yours is re- January nineteenth or eighteenth. 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 Yeah. I also yeah. remember Gus is always two twenty two because it's my anniversary with Michael. Yeah. So. I remember Bernie's. Because it's my it's birthday. Yours. <laughs> uh, yeah, Birth- birthdays are weird. It's just like it's the only. I guess the, what's, what it stems from is you didn't do anything. You just managed to not die for another year. And when you're young, it's like big fucking deal. Yeah. You know, it, you actually you're more likely to die when you're young. It's you pretty easy so? to die when you're little. So well, I mean, once you reach a, cer- a certain age, like adulthood, it's like yeah. I mean, yeah, it, just, you're, you're probably going to be around for a couple more decades. To me, the the there's like. Your 21st birthday, which is, that's a fun one. That's like the best good, the last good one. Mm-hmm. And then 25, well, 25, you can rent cars for cheaper. That's a party. Uh, and then, but 35 is great because then you can run for president. Oh, yeah. So. That's because a lot of people are doing that. It's just, yep. Are you going to run for president, Chris? Uh, of the HOA. Oh, I, <laughs> well, that's, yeah, well, that's, that's how I get into politics. I <laughs> start with the HOA. <laughs> I start with the HOA. Then I'm going to work my See, like, way up. I, I tried to convince Chris to run for president of his HOA. 21 is nothing in Canada. Oh, yes. oh yeah. It's yeah. 19 in some provinces, right? And 18, 18 in, in some places. places, yeah. But yeah, 21 is like a nothing birthday. So you don't like go out and party on 21st? You go across to, go the, United to the United States, States to yeah. party. I think like maybe because the U.S. is such an influence on our culture, like it's still the kind of bit. like an exciting birthday because you think of 21 as like you're now an adult, even though like that was 18 for most of us, 18 or 19. Yeah. Um, I feel like 25 is a bigger birthday in my mind because that's like you're officially in your mid-20s. You could rent a car now, I think. Yeah. I think your insurance also goes down. Yeah. Yeah. I just remember when I was in college, and the year that like everyone turned 21, like you had to go out and drink oh, yeah. so much because every other week someone was turning 21. Mm-hmm. So, and I think I think on 6th Street on your 21st birthday, you get like free shots or something. So it was like a, a big deal. Like everyone had to go out and get really drunk and whatever. And it was just like it got exhausting. And it was like always trying to make a big deal about it. And like it's funny how that changes so quickly. Yeah. <laughs> like I saw something uh, on Reddit. It was like some meme someone posted. And it said, when I was younger, I used to try to sneak out of my house to go to parties. And now I try to sneak out of parties to go back to my house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, that's exactly perfect. it. I did one time. This is a drunken thing. I I remember I was with a friend and they vomited in a bag. And then for whatever reason, I was like, I'm going to save this and put it oh, in the no, freezer. Chris. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> so you can have your 21st vomit. 
in the freezer. I never knew you were so sentimental. Yeah. yeah so I like put a bag moment. of vomit <laughs> in, in his freezer or your uh, freezer? freezer? Did he, he bring it out on his 22nd birthday and eat no. it like wedding cake? <laughs> I don't remember. I don't even think I like followed it up. <laughs> Probably woke up. Oh. And Do you think maybe one day he just looked in his freezer and said, what the fuck like, is what? this? He what thinks is it's this? old soup. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God, Chris! What is wrong uh, with you? I, I mean, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> he's gonna want to remember this day. I was like, you're. It was, it was like, cause it was like a weird. It was like a, 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 I don't know, like an award or something. Like, oh, you did it! <laughs> you got, you got so drunk that you vomited. Oh my God! It's really unhealthy and bad for you. Oh. Congrats. <laughs> There's someone who uh, once tweeted at a bunch of us at Rooster Teeth and they're like, oh, it's going to be my 21st birthday in a few days. Where do you think I should go to get blackout drunk? Like, what's your recommendation? And I just responded, my recommendation is don't get blackout drunk. Yeah. <laughs> like, that is not a goal you want to achieve. And I never understood that mentality of like, oh, I just want to go get fucking wasted and not remember anything. I think I've done that yeah. like once in my life when I was really having a bad day. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think it's a, usually it's escape, right? Like you want to. Forget stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not a good excuse. Or you're do raising it, money for charity and want to make cheese. <laughs> <laughs> that too. You know, and go. That crept up on you though. I don't think you sought that out go too your, much. And go either way. I yeah. was having a time during that extra life trying to get you to stop drinking and stop getting other people See, to that's, drink. That's the problem. When people tell me not to do something, I'm going to do it. And then when I'm already intoxicated, it gets even worse. But it's like a challenge. That. Yeah. It wasn't even that. Like, you guys would spin the wheel and it landed on everyone oh, no. takes three shots. And no. I, I was like, how about how about everyone do just one shot? How about three people do one shot instead of one person does three shots? <laughs> and you're like, no. And you grab the bottle oh, no. and start <laughs> chugging it. It was um, not the best decision. Mm. Not, uh, not at all. It was for charity. It was a good cause. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a there's a, a wing of the children's hospital now named after Rooster Teeth. <laughs> which should be the which cheese master cheese domain. Oh, yep. No, God, no. Um, the cheese domain. <laughs> man, what, when's the last time you? So Beck and I, I, I say it all the time. We grew up in towns really close to each other, like small towns out on the border. When's the last time you were you were down there? Uh, I was down there in June. Wait, no, wait. I didn't go to Carrizo, but I went to Concan in July. Okay. It's like out closer to Uvalde. Yeah. Are you in Concan? Can you say? Yeah, we have a house there. Oh, okay. Just, you know, it's like the... Concan's like... The Riviera of the Southwest, right? There's like 10 houses there. No, there are a ton of houses. Is there? Yeah. Okay, like, I haven't been to Concan all along in a the long river. time. So yeah, we, I went for my birthday, speaking of, just because <laughs> I wanted to get away from everyone and have some peace and quiet for a weekend. It's right. nice out there. Yeah. It's really, really scenic. Have you guys <laughs> ever taken a vacation like that where you just go to some like cottage or like a cabin or something in the middle of nowhere and just I... like spend time there? I've done like work retreat things where like to work on something and then like go to a like an Airbnb or a cottage or something and just like lock in and not leave for like yeah. four or five days. I imagine that'd be really fun. Uh, I mean, we were working like a lot. So, it, but it was like very cathartic in a weird way. We were yeah. like, yeah, like, hey, we have a job. We're not leaving this, this place until we're done. <laughs> <No. laughs> yeah. uh, I did something similar, but kind of the opposite. And I'm going to tell you what that is right after I read this thing right okay. here. I want to remind everyone, this episode of the Receipt Podcast is brought to you by Hims. 65% of men start losing their hair by age 35. That's two out of every three men on the planet. And the thing is, when you start to notice hair loss, it's too late. It's easier to keep the hair you have than to replace the hair you've lost. If you have this problem, check out 4 It's a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. Hims provides medical-grade solutions, real doctors who offer quality generic equivalents to name-brand prescriptions to help you keep your hair where it belongs. There's no waiting room and no awkward doctor visits. Save time and your hair by going to 4 It's all pretty easy. You'll answer a few quick questions online. Then doctors will review your information and prescribe a solution for you. Uh, we've talked about it here several times before. You know there's many people here who've tried out the product and love it. Uh, so you can order now, and our viewers get a trial month of Hims for just $5 today, right now, while supplies last. See website for full details. This will cost you hundreds if you went to the doctor or a pharmacy. It's easy to use hymns. Go to forhims.com slash rooster. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash rooster. Forhims.com slash rooster. Thank you, hymns, for sponsoring this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast. Um, so what I did was, uh, was kind of the opposite. I wanted to get away, but I also am not a big fan of going to nature. So what I did was it was before iPhones existed and before like you could travel around the world with your cell phone. Uh, I just went to Japan. I was like, I want to go somewhere where 
I don't speak the language, and I want to go somewhere where my phone doesn't work and where no one can find me. And so I just went to Japan. For I feel like that weeks. would be terrifying. I I don't think I could go to Japan or any other foreign country without my phone because I feel like that is such a good source of information and like oh yeah you could just google how to get somewhere what trains to the take the trains are so much easier when you have a phone yeah i, I mean that, i was thinking about that while like traveling solo because you guys were all like oh how are you going to survive it's like with your phone you can it'll like tell you, you what everything it will tell you what to do mm -hmm. and also like if you have to look up how to say something or even like to translate a sign mm -hmm. or whatever it is how did you do that you figure it out if you need to, you'll figure it out. People did it before, mm -hmm. yeah. before smartphones. Was there just like enough people that you encountered that also spoke English? I figured. No, it I really didn't can. speak very much for two weeks. That was kind of the point. Like I wanted to get away. Like I didn't want to talk to anyone. I didn't. Where in Japan did you go? Tokyo. Okay. So I mean, you can you, you can get by okay. Yeah. I really want to go to Japan at some point. I don't know if I'm going to make it out this year, but it's like definitely on my bucket list. Man, I'm so jealous, Miles and Miles. I know and their trip was so much there. fun, and that's like one of the reasons why it looks. I'm like, watching their trip and seeing all the places they're going, like the big cities, but also like the little places they, within Tokyo or uh, right. Japan. Yeah. Do you see the thing w with all the deer? The deer, yeah. Wait, did they go to or, Nara? I, I don't know, but they were. Oh man, I got I mauled saw... by a deer there. It bit me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Those deer are so conditioned oh. to be fed by humans that they start chomping they're at you. Aggressive. One, yeah. one head butted Miles in the ass. I and in the photo, it looks like it's sticking its tongue out as it's <laughs> as it's headbutting him. Let me see if I can find find that. It photo. wants dead ass. That that site is so awesome. There's a temple there that is like the largest wooden structure in the world. It's a, a world heritage site, but it. I mean, you go in. Photos don't do it justice. It's so Indiana Jones. Like there's this oh. wooden statue of the Buddha, and it's mm. fucking huge. And it, yeah, it's just it's one of the coolest places I, I've ever been. I really want to go there, but. I don't know if it's the kind of place that I guess you've been there before. You guys, you've been there. Yeah. Is it a trip that you would recommend taking with like a group? No, if, no, no. Like a I smaller. Mean, it'd be like, like a smaller group. Like just Michael and I went, and we were able to cover a lot of ground. Okay. And I just I don't like traveling with groups in general yeah. because it seems like you always end up waiting I on feel someone. Like well, a group of four is my ideal travel. Well, situation. lots of times also when you end up with a group, you don't do anything. That anyone wants to do, you kind of like settle on like a median thing you instead of like compromise? doing something. Yeah. Oh, this is the. Yeah, if you scroll to the next photo, there's like a close up of that deer's uh, head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it is sticking oh, yeah. out of the shot. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it's with four people, you could figure things out a bit easier, and you have more people to talk to in a in a place where no one else speaks English. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like with two people, it might get. I don't know, hard to figure uh, things out or... Well, also, like, I think the other, the other upside, and of course I'm going to advocate for a smaller group because that's always what I that's do. that's you. I think the other benefit to going with a small group is you're, you're less insulated in your group. Like, you have to interact with the people and you have to see what's going on. You can't fall back on, oh, I'm just going to communicate and get by with mm. these people that I'm with. It's true. Mm -hmm. I, whenever I was in uh, Montreal, I went to the... They had this, like, mountain... It's not really a mountain. Mount Royal? Mount Royal? Yeah. And because I heard they had all these like raccoons, and I went to go like <laughs> just to go yeah. To go well, they had like really friendly raccoons. Pandas? Yeah, and but I think I went I went at night, and I brought chips, <laughs> and I was like trying to catch <laughs> raccoons, but like that's why people go to Canada. Uh, I mean. I, it, that is, I think that right there is the most Chris thing you've ever <laughs> said or done. I don't know, was it trying to catch raccoons or was it the time you tried to freeze puke? I'm, it could go one way or the other. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't, well, I, I didn't see any, so I didn't like see any raccoons. That was like my, that was the most disappointing thing I did while I was traveling. So, uh, the most disappointing you th thing you did in Canada was not get rabies. Well, I wasn't trying to get rid. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to. Ra ra Do you think any raccoons are like like friendly house raccoons? They're all just gonna like. They're they, all no, evil. No, there are pictures of this where they're like people hanging out with the raccoons. Okay. Was, I, Google search people. I lived hanging, in Montreal most of my life. Out I've out never hung out with a raccoon. I just I I'd heard that it was a thing, so I got some, bought some chips and I went up and I was like. No raccoons that I saw, but that being did said, did you leave I, a trail? I didn't do a trail thing. I was looking for the raccoons. Did you go to that like lookout at the top? Yeah, I did, and I was like, "There are too many people there for raccoons." Yeah, well, no, nah, I don't know. I mean, it's just, there's no pictures of people hanging out with raccoons. I'm just dude. <laughs> well I, on Yelp, I saw it. So I it's some raccoon fake news group. Group site. What else did you do in Montreal? Um, I, I I meant to give you recommendations and I completely forgot. Oh, uh, you, I, I but thought, you went to Montreal too, Becca. Like, yeah, when were you there? I was there like last week. Oh, yeah. I went. I, it's been exactly a year ago. That's oh. where I made a baby. You made a baby? Mm -hmm. 
It's, and and you, you know can... exactly where it was? Mm -hmm. Is that, is, oh man, that's interesting. So could you know? Where was it? In a house on Rue Saint something. That's, that's how do you, nice. man, Golden Square that's, mile so, area. that's so interesting. You could pinpoint that was it. That was the baby that's moment. I mean. Yeah. Um, oh God. What fell? What was that? Well, I didn't do anything as, uh, as. Is the... that a pizza, pizza cutter? Why is this here? It's a pizza. It's why a... was it next to me and why did it fall? Ah, uh, the booby trap Maybe fell. <laughs> like, Bernie didn't put work. this here. Yeah, that's Bernie's. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just gonna, just gonna put it over here. Sorry. Does that feel like an accomplishment where you're like, ah, oh, I went on a va well, vacation I, and I made a baby? Well, I feel like all the data's there and I feel like you're, you'd be interested in like all the data. I took the most data. ridiculous data based approach to conception. Like, it's just, yeah. Did you yeah. have all those apps to track like when you were fertile and everything? Oh, like yeah. That? Peed on these sticks like three times a day and uh, charted my temperature. So was it like, Damn. oh shit, we gotta go right now, like it's Pretty time. Much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. I imagine <laughs> that's a fun time to be in a, in a relationship when you're trying to make a baby. It takes all the fun out of sex. Does entirely. it really? Yeah, it becomes so routine. And I like, guess because it's, it's like, uh, at 3.15 today, it's go time. Mm -hmm. It's like rolls around. It's like, like as quickly as possible, please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we, got, we have a window between, yeah, 3.15 and 3.16. <laughs> go, 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 go. Man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, Esther sent me this article earlier, speaking of making babies. Um, this 45-year-old man lost his virginity because and it, he, had, he waited so long because he was born without a penis. Oh, I think I heard you talking about this earlier. Yeah. So he had to get a bionic penis installed into his body so that he could finally have sex for the first time. And was like he like a Kindle? Or what, he, he had testicles. So okay. I guess it was like some genetic condition so he was, was born with. Like like Where, a urethra? I, they don't. I want to know more. Did, I need did photos. Did he heal it, or like how does it work? Go on. With well, well a bionic. I mean, is there some a bion? Well, is there a way? <laughs> did it did it like shoot any? <laughs> what you're having? How does it work? I assume that all of his internal organs and everything, like everything, was there. There was just no penis external shaft. Yeah, yeah, shaft for that. So could he like? He just sprayed pee and jizz. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, could he could he ejaculate? Because if he had testicles and everything else, but just yeah. nothing to to shoot it shoot it out, or like to stimulate the the shooting of yeah. Oh I, yeah, that mm. is an interesting one. Yeah, I don't I don't know. So he had sex with his bionic penis at 45. Yes, he, with uh, who? Uh, Who's the lucky girlfriend. gal? Okay. And uh, so it it's it just it, it it's crazy that you can do that. It's a, it costs. The surgery costs, if he's from the UK, the surgery costs 50,000 pounds. Wow. Uh, wow. Best purchase he ever made. I was going to say, it's probably worth <laughs> you it. You know, like, and they had to take skin off of his arm to cover it. So it looks like a, like, so he has, like a robot dick. It looks he like has a, forearm a dick. He has skin, you would yeah. say? Exactly. <laughs> Very good. And uh, they said That's that knee slapper. When, uh, <laughs> when, they, when he first had it installed or implanted, that he had to walk around with an erection for 10 days. Uh, so I going through puberty essentially <laughs> <laughs> Just to make sure no that it worked. Oh, it had, are you sure he walked around because I'm sure he was pretty lightheaded after a while <laughs> <laughs> Then it said uh, he had to he had to test out the function every morning and night and leave it erect for 20 minutes So yeah, like being a teenager. Yeah <laughs> So w when you're in that situation, I imagine you get to choose how big you want it oh. He, uh, he hmm. describes or it as ridiculously big <laughs> Well, <laughs> well, I mean, well compared, yeah. to, yeah. compared to what years. he had before. Well, also after forty-five years of not having anything, God, that must be so strange to f all of a sudden, like after forty-five years of life, now have this piece of you that was missing. Yeah. So I have to assume there's no sensation, like there are no nerve endings in his bionic dog. Yeah, I, 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 I well, guess. I mean, how else would he? How would you get it? You just engage the Maybe robot it's like arm. A pump? Is yeah, it like a button? A... And you're like erect. Beep. So there, yeah. there's a there's a, an image explaining it, but the text is all really small. Let's see. Uh, skin and muscle is taken from the left arm and a vein in the right leg. The skin is wrapped around the vein in a tube. Surgeons mold the flesh in the shape of a penis and attach it to the body. Inside the new penis is a penile implant. This is go. comprised of a saline reservoir, a cylinder that runs the length of the penis, and a pump. And release valve that's inside the scrotum. Mm. Uh, the implant allows the user to pump saline fluid that is kept in the reservoir into the cylinder. Once fully pumped, the penis will be hard enough for sexual intercourse. So mm -hmm. it's filled with saline. For so theoretically, 
you could have one installed anywhere, correct? Yes. Right? I mean, I'm just saying, like, if you had 50,000 pounds and you're like, knee dick, and you wanted one. Where would you get it? Didn't we have this conversation, or y'all had it on another I podcast? Think we like did the work. worst place to have a vagina, I think. Or, oh. Well, but this is like you get to choose where you want it's it. Podcast 500, I think we talked about that. Where's the best and worst place to have a vagina? Where is the best place to have a penis? An extra one? Or just let's say you didn't have yours. Where would you, and you could put it anywhere on your body. Well, I think I'd put it where, I, I, I'm talking about additional. I, I wouldn't want, a, a, if I only, if I didn't have any penis, I wouldn't be like, yeah, give me one on my cheek. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. like, I'm going to want right, one so where it belongs. Yeah. $65,000, by the way. $65,000. Where would you put it? Um, man, well, I, I, part of me, well. This mm, is permanent, by the way. Like Permanent. This is where it's going to live. What about one, like, on your butt? Like, so, so you just have, like, right next to your sex? real penis? No, like. Like so you have sex? like backward sex or like two? What if? Oh, girl, could like piggyback you? Yeah, or you have like you you you're thrusting, but you're thrusting forward and backwards it's at the like same time. So like, you're you get, the whole. You get a dick. Now you <laughs> like, get a dick. Now you get a dick. Yeah, you like you could. You, you have to girl behind people, you and in front of you. Yeah, one behind and one in front. And you're like. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I, like I feel like that I would really. It. I would not want to be the girl behind you. <laughs> Just her <laughs> ass. Yeah, you don't want you don't want an ass dick. <laughs> not particularly. Oh, right, imagine, like between your imagine, teeth, so you got to spread you, them. When you go to the bathroom, you have to make sure it doesn't dip into the water. You're like, oh. Oh, I'm like holding it up. And it's it's a whole ordeal, dude. Yeah, I guess everywhere you sit too. If you get, you're like, oh, like you're yes. like, ow, oh, what I happened? Like I sat on my dick. I have a <laughs> question for for y'all, <laughs> ball bearing citizens. Uh, have you ever shit on your balls? No. Like, what if you? <laughs> I've never been asked that either. Normally. I feel like women ask you like if you sit on your balls. Yeah, but no. I've never been asked if I shit. I just on my have balls. a lisp. It's, no, uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> just because I, I feel like as you get older, your balls like hang into but the it's, toilet. It's not. And if you ever have diarrhea, I guess if there's it, like, overspray sprays, maybe no. I, like I've seen toilets where there's just like I, like I'm trying to picture on the it rim now. of a toilet. There's someone who had a very violent poop. and like a W where there's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean like a I hole through a wall where you run. The only thing I could imagine is if someone pooped and the splash, the splashage got up on their balls. But mm -hmm. I don't think like shitting on the balls. I mean, you, I'm sure. Plus, you also like, I, I don't know. I feel like your balls they don't always hang, right? Like yeah. sometimes they kind of come they, up. Yeah, yeah depending and, on the temperature. <laughs> but I guess when you get real, when you get older and they sag a little more. Yeah, but even then, there's. They're... Let's ask Bernie. Is he still around? Or, <laughs> or if you're Zach Anner. <laughs> Maybe Zach has shit on his balls. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess if you're trying to, you could. Is yeah. that a challenge? <laughs> Have you ever seen I that mean... picture of that pig that shit on his balls? Because I guess pig balls are like right under the butt. No. He just has a little turd on him. It's pretty funny. Oh, <laughs> gross. <laughs> okay, I gotta look that up now. Pig, pig shit, shit on balls. <laughs> That's a Google search. <laughs> Didn't yeah? Didn't Zach make a joke one time that like when he goes to the bathroom, his balls are in the toilet water? <laughs> That's I don't. I mean, why I, did you make me look this up? <laughs> is, is there like a variety of images? I, no, it's the same image all the time, and I can't unsee that. <laughs> <laughs> that pig has ridiculously huge balls. That's that's part of the problem. Um, don't look that up, please. If you if you value yourself, don't look that up. You're like, oh, where's the link dump? <laughs> no. Where's the, where's, the, where's the pig it's dump? It's double entendre That's there. That's a kink dump. Man, yep. I was um, you know, I was asking you about going back uh, to Carrizo earlier. Uh, I went to Eagle Pass recently for the first time in many years, and I forgot what a fucking shithole. And it's like better now than it was when you lived there too. Yeah, like I was there, and I was like, I I, I could finally start to put my finger on what's wrong with that town. And it's a town where people have just given up. Oh, yeah. And people just don't, do not give a fuck. Uh, I was at a restaurant and I was there and someone that I was with had a question. It's like, it's the kind of restaurant where you go up to the counter and there's a menu and you tell the person at the counter what you want and they call a number. Kind of like Tao Cabana, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we go up there and the person I'm with says, you know, sees that there's something on the menu that says chef salad. And the person I'm with asks, oh, what's in the chef salad? The person who's working behind the register turns around, looks at the menu, and it just says chef salad. So the person behind the counter just goes, yeah, I don't know. And the person I'm with says, well, it just like, does it have meat? Like, is there ham in it or anything? And the guy behind the counter is like, yeah, I, I don't know. It's a salad. Like, wow. no attempt wow. to find out. No, no, nothing. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, right. 
then uh, later that day, we went down. There's a group of us. We went down. There's a casino there. We went down to the casino. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were sitting in the restaurant, and there's like a bar right there. And one of the guys I was with was like, oh, I'm going to get something to drink. So the waiter comes by. And uh, the guy that I'm with is Hispanic. His, his family's from Mexico. The waiter's all, also Mexican. Almost everyone down there is Mexican. And uh, the guy I'm with tells the waiter, I want eradura, tequila, mm -hmm. and soda. And the waiter's like, what? Eradura, tequila, and soda. What? The guy I'm with goes, all right, just give me tequila and soda. And the waiter says, Coke or Pepsi? And uh -oh. the guy was like, just give me tequila and club soda with three wedges of lime. So he just assumed soda meant like, oh, what type of soda? Yeah. Pop. It's, it's like, yeah, no, no one cares. And then it took 25 minutes of for course. that to come out. It's, I, it's, every it's, time we go out to eat down there, I have a nervous breakdown because it takes like an hour and a half to get your food and everyone's okay with it. Yeah. Like, it's just, it, it's just bar for the course. bad. Like because yeah. it's just a slow lifestyle. No, no one cares. Yeah. Like nobody cares. And nobody has any real restaurant experience. So yeah, it, like they cook it like you're, they're cooking it at home. I would think it would be like smaller towns. People are more polite and friendly and, and wanting to be more welcoming of people. But maybe that's just the idea in my head. No, man, people. People know if you're not from there, they will stare at you. <laughs> it's uh, it's not a very welcoming place. <laughs> oh. I used to get pulled over every time I went home just because it's like a new car in town. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's I still do get pulled over like every third time or so. Really? Mm-hmm. Because I don't have a license plate on the front of my car. Mm. And they always and that's give why me every time about that. Yeah. When, uh, when I, I had a first... For the first time ever, something weird happened to me on the way back from Eagle Pass this time. So when you're, when you're down on the border, when you're leaving the border there's immigration checkpoints mm -hmm. normally like about 15 20 miles outside of town on the highway uh it was raining pretty bad when i was leaving and i got to the immigration checkpoint and you know there's normally a stop sign there was a go sign there was no one no, working wait. there and it was a green octagon and no. it said uh, go in white letters did you take a picture of it no because it happened so fast i pulled up and there was no one there and it just said go i was like Oh shit! I don't. I don't yeah, have to stop. talked about that at RTX, right? Yeah, but we was like, there, there was a like, go sign. I saw a go sign. Oh my god! So they exist. Yes. Wow. Uh, and I was like, that's really weird. You never see the immigration checkpoint unmanned. Yeah. So did you see? Um, this was like a couple months ago. They were putting up immigration checkpoints in the north, like along the Canadian border, mm -hmm. and everyone was freaking out. They're like, "It's Handmaid's Tale. This is happening." And I was like. God, I grew up with that. That's not strange to me. Yeah. I mean, they would pop, set up shop and just I, stop cars going by. I, yeah. I, I'm going to talk a little out my ass, but I think there's like this weird extra judiciary zone that exists along 30 miles of the international border where you are, you have less rights to deny search and seizure of your property. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, it's like using that law is why they can set up checkpoints close to the border for uh, immigration mm. purposes in the United States. I remember when I moved here, I was on a work visa and I was convinced that I was going to have to bring my documentation with me wherever I went, even if I was just like driving to the grocery store. Because I was like, what if someone pulls me over and asks to see like my your papers? My papers. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, they're probably not going to do that. And even they then, could though. They could. You never know. So I don't drive around with them, but there was a time when I first moved to Austin where they were in my car for the first like two months. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, you're probably not going to need that. It's going to be okay. Yeah, but yeah, it's uh, it's grown a lot. It's totally different. I I drove through Carrizo for briefly. Fun stuff. Did you take your car? No, no, because there's no. Well, you were asking me. That's how. That's how yeah. I was talking to you about it. Yeah, there's no like fast chargers down there. Like yeah. there's that slow. I, I stopped by that place in Uvalde mm -hmm. uh, that has like a slow charger, but. Yeah, and I, asked we, the, I asked the woman who was working there. Yeah, I saw, like, I, I had a, a meal there. And I asked her, so does anyone ever use their Tesla charger out there? Mm -hmm. And she goes, no, I've never seen anyone use it before. Uh, like, the whatever service provides it, I guess you can comment on different mm -hmm. locations. Mm -hmm. And I saw that some guy was like, this worked. It was great. Blah, blah, blah. But there was only one. One guy's used it. But, um, yeah, we did the math. If we got to my parents' house and plugged in the car into a normal outlet as soon as we got there, we would have enough to get back home after like 48 con straight hours of charging yeah. at a trickle speed. Yeah, for most places you can you don't worry about it, but down there there's like a weird pocket where there's nothing. Yeah, and it'll get better no soon. There will be that one in Dilly, and then I think they're going to be doing them more along I-35. But for now, yes, no, that's one place you do not want to be stranded with an electric car. How's yeah. that gas car working out for you, Chris? It's guzzling. Me and you with our <laughs> 
Our gas. I still have a gas guzzling car. Michael's is electric. My my steering wheel, I think, is coming off. What? Yeah. How did you discover that? Well, it's really loose. Like, Like, when you steer? Like, like holding it out? Yeah. No, as in, like, when I turn, it, like, it turns, and then I, it's like, I have to keep turning it before it starts turning. And so it you clicks. Turns so it's and it turns, but you have to keep turning. Yeah, as in like turning. you turn it and then you have to turn an extra bit just to get it to start turning. So it's like loose. It's like it spins a lot while you turn it. That sounds pretty dangerous. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna look into it. It sounds like <laughs> driving in the fifties, like yeah, in the yeah. movies. You're like, yeah, you know how like yeah, in, anytime you steering. see a, uh, like a person fake driving poorly in a yeah. movie where they're like doing yeah. this, that's what I do all the time. Yeah, you should get that check like now. I'm going to. I'm going. Yeah. Home. No, no, I, I know. I, that's like it was on my to do list for today. Okay. Uh-oh. Yeah, because yeah. that's like the if there's one thing I don't want to fail while I'm driving, it's my steering wheel. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get that. And yeah. Look at. Where are you gonna take it? Uh, I don't know. I haven't looked into that part yet. <laughs> so you, you by taking care of it, you mean you were gonna start investigating? Yes. There's some yeah. jiffy lubes and stuff nearby. Yeah. I'm sure. I think it's just like a loose thing, a loose bolt. Oh, we'll see. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> a loose bolt. So you don't Probably. consider yourself like a car person. You don't want to like take the dash off and try to investigate it nah, on your own. Man, Do you see that Steven Septic tried to replace his steering wheel? I saw this on Instagram. Oh my god. He got no. like a carbon fiber steering wheel and fucked it up. He like took it all apart and couldn't get it back together. So he's just driving around with the steering wheel with all these wires hanging There's out. Some shit that I do not like, even if I think I could figure it out, I'm still like, I'm gonna let a professional take care of this. Yeah. Car stuff, any type of like electrical stuff, plumbing stuff. I'm like, mm-mm, I don't want to fuck that up. Yeah. Mm-mm. Yeah, electricity. I would say it's scary. It's like it's invisible and it can kill you. <laughs> yeah, I don't want. I don't want. To, I don't want to mess with that. Just like me. <laughs> it's uncompromising. <laughs> <laughs> you try to compromise with lightning? Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh uh. No okay. compromising there. Man, I saw there was a. Uh, what do they call it? A poll that was done. Mm-hmm. I think it was a Harris poll, and they were gauging people's favorite restaurants in the United States. Like chains? And, oh, I right. Think I like saw for that. example, best burger restaurant as voted on by the people in this poll was Five Guys. I hope. Best coffee shop was Krispy Kreme. Okay. Best Mexican restaurant's Taco Bell. <sighs> so it's official. I mean, the best Mexican restaurant in the United States is Taco Bell. It's sad that only. in most of the US, Taco Bell probably is the best Mexican food around. Or the only Mexican yeah. food around yeah. in some places. You know, they got stuff like nacho fries. Man, I grew up eating nacho fries all the time. Mm, yeah. My grandmother used to make Although you yeah. did grow up near the home of the nacho, this where food. it was invented. The yeah. Doritos Wait. Locos Taco yeah. thing. What's, what is it? Yeah, that's what it is. It's like a spicy Dorito shell. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's actually pretty good. Me and, me and Bernie went to go get those when we were old, at the old office. Did you try the chicken shell one? No. We had, oh, I never like, tried that. Was Tony went and picked up a lot of those one day, and uh, they're pretty good. Is it like cooked chicken? Yeah, in- it's like super, super thin. Hammered and flat. it's a shell mm-hmm. and bread and fried. It's like chicken fried chicken what? shell. I, I've been I've been trying to find this. Don't judge me, but I've been trying to find frozen pizzas that have unusual crusts. So it's like sometimes you can find frozen pizzas that have like cauliflower crust. Mm-hmm. And one time I was at the store and I saw this frozen pizza had it said like something something on the box caught my eye and I looked at it and it said that. The crust was made entirely out of chicken. And I was like, well, now I have to try that. Okay. So I bought it and I took it home. It's frozen pizza. You put it in just like any other pizza. You put it in the oven and let it heat up. Then you eat it. And it was fucking gross. It was so disgusting. Was it I, I hammered they, thin? It was, it was pretty thin. I guess they must have taken like chicken meat or material like and like processed sludge. it. And yeah, and made it like oh. super thin. And uh, tried to make it was into it a pizza mushy? crust. Yeah, I mean, it, was pretty, it was pretty mushy. Texture, yeah. not good. It was, it was, it was gross. There so was... if you ever see a chicken crust pizza, do not eat that. Yeah, uh, you could uh, Google this to get a picture. But when I was in New York City this last week, we went to a place called Quality Italian, and one of their specialties there is a chicken parmesan pizza. Fall of the Italian. Uh, quality. Quality. Italian. Quality Italian in New York City, chicken parmesan pizza. It is, it comes out and it's like, it looks exactly like a pizza. Like it's got cheese, it's cut into slices and everything like that. But there's no crust or tomato sauce or anything like that. It's just like a chicken Parmesan. This looks amazing. And so it's like chicken on the bottom, but it's like the, um, yeah, baked chicken. Is that it? Yeah. Oh my God. And then like whatever a chicken Parmesan has, it's amazing. Ugh. Does it have like a crispy bottom? Yeah. Is it brown? Mm. So like it's just chicken on the bottom, but it's oh, crispy. Oh, that sounds good. That's it was good. delicious. So if you're ever in New York City, go to Quality Italian and try that. I want to eat that. It's just in New York. 
so good. You were just in New York, yeah. You could have told me. Oh, I was there. Oh, you I were, was there you, before you. You, you we were like at the airport at the same time, I think. But yeah, I flew I out. I was arriving you and you were leaving. Yeah. It's a 14 inch slab of chicken parm. <sighs> so good. You share it, obviously. Mm, or I not. I wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that looks so good. I love uh, weird stuff like that. I feel like sometimes places go a little crazy with it. Like, Gordo's, I think, is an interesting concept, but for the most part, it's like stuff I wouldn't want to eat. Oh, the donut? Yeah. Meals. It makes you feel bad about eating there, but it's good. It's good, that yeah. That burger, that donut burger, so good. <sighs> but, but it's just not something I would ever, like, seek out, I think. Yeah. Like, if I'm there, I'm in the air, like, okay, sure, maybe. But, like, a chicken parm pizza like that, oh, yeah, I think I would, I would, I would seek that out. All right, any of you going to New York Comic Con? No. No? Mm-hmm. Okay. Too bad. I was going to say we could go get some chicken parm pizza. Why don't we make one? We could. I doubt it'll be nearly as good as the one that they make there. We we have some pizza projects in the works for the we podcast. We do. Ooh. Maybe that's why the cutter's over there. When I are we going to de- debut that pizza project? I think uh, a prototype's been worked on uh, already. So I think uh, we're... So I, soon? I think lessons have been learned. I should have eaten lunch. Do you want a pizza? Yeah, I'll get it as soon as we're done. I'm hungry now. Yeah, I'll stock a pizza. Yeah. Got uh, a slice. Here, let me read this thing here. I want to remind everyone, this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is also brought to you by Squarespace. When you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Squarespace offers beautiful, award-winning designer templates. You can create a website or online store in just minutes. It's an all-in-one platform. There's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. It's easy to set up or transfer your domain on Squarespace. Manage all your domain and building settings in one place. Plus, it's never been easier to sell products or services online. Manage your products, orders, and inventory easily. With Squarespace, you can engage with your audience, get found across search and social, and grow your following. Following, uh, Start your free trial today at squarespace.com. Go to squarespace.com slash roosterteeth to get 10% off your first purchase. That's squarespace.com slash roosterteeth for 10% off your first purchase. It's so great. You don't have to install or patch stuff. Can't stress that enough. It's so easy. Uh, we've been asking you to share your Squarespace created websites. We've gone through and picked some more of our favorites. As a reminder, with Squarespace, you too can make sites like this. Be sure to tweet at us with hashtag RT Squarespace. And here's a few we picked for this week. First up, we have at Project Cloud. Escape the Labyrinth, coming soon. Uh, next up, we got at Nick underscore Frollo. Frollo, American Gasser. And <laughs> last up, we got Real DJLC. Oh, I like that. What city is that? Atlanta. Is, is it? it? Atlanta's, Atlanta's Gold, Gold Star Gold. Standard and Entertainment. Oh, cool. There you go. It's a nice uh, skyline. <laughs> Thanks for showing your, us uh, <laughs> your sights and for letting us know what the Atlanta skyline looks like. Yeah. I learned something today. Yeah. You ever been to Atlanta? Oh, I guess we, we, went, all we, went to, the, we all went to Atlanta for the immersion like yeah. four oh, years, God. Or five yeah. years ago. I don't even like... I don't know. That's like not even on my radar of places I've been. Yeah, yeah we weren't well, we weren't necessarily in Atlanta. It was yeah. like an hour out of Atlanta. I mean, I know because me and Brandon went up for like you guys were directing that. Yeah, yeah. And we so we went up like the weekend before, and we we were there for like about a week. But you guys, I think, were just up there for like a day. Oh I God, no, we were there like two days, two or three two days. days. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't. I don't remember anything about that trip. Really? I remember, all I remember is filming that immersion. I remember that I was been sick, in Austin for and life. Bernie was sick. I think between takes, like, I was laying down on the floor because I felt so bad. Yeah. Uh, I remember we had to wait. There was, like, a, a place where we were having everybody wait, like, the casting crew. And it was, like, a place above the track so you could yeah. see down into the track. Yeah. And I remember having to wait there for hours. And it was just, like, a very long day. And it was hot. It was really hot, maybe. It was starting to get hot. I think it was, like, in April when we went. April or, yeah. We also did the podcast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that, yeah. Some milestone. Yeah, don't remember which milestone. I his video was it. A t- it was it for the tenth anniversary of Rooster Teeth. Yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was You're like right. so. It was April twenty thirteen. Yes. Mm. Damn. So, so it's always weird the difference between like directing something and a- acting in something because when you're acting, you're like, oh, you wait around a whole lot. Yeah, and, directing, and then when you're, you're like, directing, go, go, you're like, go. there's never enough time. Mm-hmm. I always need. You always want more, like one more hour. What do you prefer? Uh, I mean, I like dire- I, directing is more fulfilling. It's also a lot more stressful. Acting is more fun. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's true. Speaking of making people do stuff, have you seen those videos where people have developed like AI that can make people dance? Yes. 
What? So it's like you remember it's there like was Berkeley, right? Yeah, there was like that that controversy with like deep fakes last year where like they could superimpose people's faces realistically into yep. like photos where they weren't. Well, this is like or videos or video. Uh, this is like taking video of a dancer and like capturing the movement and then applying it to a photo of someone who isn't dancing. So it looks like the it's like they could take a photo of you and make it look like you're doing. They're all really other complex. Dance moves. Yeah, the, the two I saw, uh, one was like a pop and lock routine, and one was ballet, like mm -hmm. very elaborate and spinning like, ballet. It uses your body and everything too, like not yes. just your face. And it, yeah. so it's you 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 upload a picture. Oh, here's an example. So the source video is in the upper left, and so the person on the right is the target. They didn't actually do this dance. Whoa! But they're just using a photo of that person. Yeah. You see a little like a little so this one's Let's really see. good. The ballet one's funny because they're spinning so much that the head just stops turning at one point. <laughs> <laughs> it just looks like exorcist style. So I mean, that obviously, so creepy. It's it's not perfect. You see it breaks sometimes, but in like short bursts, it's actually really yeah. good. It looks it's, like that person is doing it, right? Hundred percent. Like you, you would never, you would never see that. For the most part, and be like, "Oh, that's fake." Like you would think, "Like, oh no, that's that person's actually dancing." Or just, yeah, yeah, just like a weird video glitch or something like that. Yeah, especially yeah, watching it online, you think like it's compression or something. I so, really want to learn how to shuffle dance. Well, because, you don't have to now. I yeah. know. Yeah, I could just put myself on a on a dancer, but uh, I don't. I don't know how I discovered this. I think it like I started seeing on Instagram all of a sudden shuffle dancing, which is like rave dancing, where people like. Sh like it's like the Running yeah. Man, but more intense. You, you, yeah, people like glide around and do this incredible dance. Um, it's my goal of mine to learn how to do that, but I'm really uncoordinated. So I will do that with you, Barbara. You want to learn how to shuffle dance with me? I'll do that. I with feel you. like you learn like piece by piece, right? Like you learn one little body movement. Yeah, and then it's like, like first find it's like the, one. the Running Man dance that you. I think that's like the first introductory step that you learn. But the way people could just d dance to every beat and every possible song and make it look good i envy those people and i want to learn how to do it even though there's no situation where i actually dance in my life other than if i go out downtown i'm drunk once a year yeah rtx yeah. barbara dance party your recital oh god <laughs> uh so th so then the the other thing that i saw related to like deep fakes and putting people in positions that they really aren't in is naughty america is starting a service where you can upload photos of yourself and have yourself digitally inserted into porn? No! What? Why is that a good idea? Which raises a lot of questions about, like, how can you prove that it's you and that you consent to that or and that they're willing to take money and profit off of that. It's really, really bizarre. What's yeah. it called? So it's uh, the website, Naughty America. Uh -oh. They're just going to... They're going to... So the the headline that I read was Naughty America wants to monetize deep fake porn. Yeah, I don't know. That feels kind of weird. And yeah, icky. yeah. I've seen people when well, like how, like I wonder what the market is, right? Yeah. Like, who? Oh, I bet it's a big market. Yeah, I feel like the 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 evil intent of that it far outweighs people just needing that extra step to get I their think, yeah. off. And it's a lot more. It's I think the market for that would be way more. Uh, people uploading pictures of, of other people. Right, that's the not, problem. Not right. themselves. Yeah. I would like, think it would be people who wanted to see like certain celebrities. Right, it's like, yeah, how do you, yeah. Or yeah. like attempt to blackmail people. Yeah, oh, how yeah. do you clear sure. like <clears throat> image, image rights and uh, consent to that kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how you approach that. If you have to like upload you a government. on a piece of paper. My name is John. I need porn. <laughs> or upload like a government ID or something to prove that it's actually you. Yeah. yeah. Ugh. I, you know, that's what like amateur porn sites do. So I guess yeah. that's good for the goose. I, uh, I I requested Instagram verification the other day. It's like in the settings. I did too. And you have to upload a a, a copy of like a government ID. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was like, do I really want to do this? It made me really like think about it. Yeah, I got go declined. Oh, you did? You did? Y'all are elite. How long did it take? Pretty quick, like three or four days. Um, they said I didn't meet the requirements. All I want to do is just have links in my stories. That's all I want. But what are the requirements then? I, never... They don't describe. It's just like you need to be someone notable, a public figure. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think that's all it says. I'll, yeah. I can read the exact like Twitter is much more explicit, and yeah. you can provide links to like prove that you're a person. There's none of that on Instagram. It's just a binary. Just, like I never form. even applied. I just woke <clears> up one day and had it. We we had a that was we had a connection at yeah. Instagram. And oh. We picked out a few people that were active. 
Yeah, mm. people who yeah were more active Says, on Instagram. Floating. A verified badge is a check that appears next to an Instagram account's name to indicate that the account is the authentic presence of a notable public figure, celebrity, global brand, or entity it represents. Submitting a request for verification does not guarantee your account will be verified. <laughs> yeah. Is it like Twitter where, <laughs> like, if you apply, you can't apply again until a certain period of time? I think it said I could apply again at some point in the future. I haven't tried. I don't know if it's, like, shut down. Let me see. Yeah, when uh, when we had that person, that connection from Instagram come through, I wasn't using Instagram yet. I regret yep. not uh, not trying to get them to. I remember we were talking about reason. it, and we were like, Gus has Instagram, but he doesn't use it. Yeah, I was just kind of squatting and on so it. Like, lately, Twitter's been fucking everything up so much. I'm, I'm, well, I'm kind of getting over that. About Twitter, they they changed their API access for third party apps, so that now like third party apps aren't as useful as they used to be, and the Twitter app's terrible. I almost never use it, mm. so it's like, why would I use a platform? that makes it difficult to use it. Where do you to ask? It's in settings and then request verification. Yeah, I can I can do it again. It's not disabled for me. I had a, I had a weird thing someone said to me a while ago. You might not uh, have it because you are verified. On Unless a you had a different account. Oh. Sorry. sorry, what, Chris? Uh, yeah, this is someone... a random story, but I had a weird thing someone said to me on a, on a date. It was the first time someone had like gone on like a Tinder date or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, oh, well, what made me be the person that you were like wanted to go out with? And they said, and she's like, or like she made the comment about like, oh, you know, it's like, oh, I, did, I was pretty sure you weren't a sociopath or a serial killer or anything. And I said, why? And then they said, and I thought it was funny. They said, well, most sociopaths are charming. <laughs> 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 and you're not charming enough <laughs> to be a sociopath, so I felt okay wow. about it. I thought you were going to say something like she saw your oh, account was verified. Yeah. No. <laughs> That's what I thought. That's where no, we were going with random. that. Wow. Because <laughs> you're not sure. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, so the date went well. Yeah. No, no it, was, it was fine. But I just Are you going to see her again? Oh. Uh, Do you charm her enough? I don't know. I don't know. I've charmed you. <laughs> was it better or worse than your date with the three or with the, the old women? Oh, that was awful. That was a really bad date. Ugh. I had went on a date where this, I, this, she, had, I told talked about it and always open, but I give the the short version is date was already drunk when I showed up, and she had befriended a bunch of old ladies who were at the bar. <laughs> so then they were like spectating the date, and then at some point the one of the old ladies started talking about like orphans, and then my date started crying. And oh then, my god! And then they and then she started talking about her her parents, and then they both like ended up just crying together, like in a like a clinic, like a I'm gonna console you, and then I I was just like, were you late? No, she, she was just yeah, very she early. probably just got there early to yeah. I mean, I understand like having a drink to like make yourself feel more comfortable, yeah. but getting drunk before a date. What well, I, I I think it was one of those things that she was out drinking, and then was like, oh, come have a drink, you know. Oh. I was just. Yeah. Like for yeah, the yeah, moment, yeah, yeah. Date. I'm out okay. drinking with these old ladies. Yeah, come yeah. join me. <laughs> anyway, it was a really bad date because it was just a lot of crying that I was not a part of. Not that I wanted to be a part of the crying. You should just start crying. I can't, to be part of it. No, nah, I couldn't cry. I couldn't. Oh, you also don't cry. I don't cry. I mean, I could try, but I could fake it. Uh, I don't know. When's the last time you cried? Uh, it's. I don't know. Like, I think I've cried once in like six years or seven wow. years or something Damn. like that. What about you, Gus? I think this God, this is so fucking dorky. I remember the last time I cried. What was it? <laughs> <laughs> it was at the end of Return of the King when I saw it for the first oh, time in the theater. God, that was a long time ago. That was a lot. That's way more than six years ago, was it? Sixteen or seventeen years oh ago. Oh my Jesus God! Christ, the last time you cried. That's awesome. High five. <laughs> not only I'm not crying, but also crying wow. for Return of the King. Of the King. Like, oh my God, I cry like Frodo's every week. going to the west with the elves. He's leaving them behind. <laughs> I think I cry every day. <laughs> there were, there, yeah, there was a period of my life where, yeah. Just, but, like, it's not always bad. Yeah. I I, lo I cry when I feel any emotion yeah. in excess. Me too. Yeah. yeah. I always think, I always, like, well up or that's, get choked up a lot. That's why you just don't feel emotions. Yeah. Oh. There you go. Yeah. Just adopt the Gus robotic way of life. <laughs> it's uncompromising. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that should be the, the title of this podcast. Podcast, what is it, 509? Uncompromising. Uncompromising. Mm -hmm. No compromises here. <laughs> oh man! Oh, did you all see that weird thing that um, that motorcycle race where one of the racers reached out and grabbed the brakes on another motorcycle? No, what? 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 Yeah, You're not like, allowed to do that, are you? Two guys were racing and they're really close to each other, and the guy on the right just reached over and pumped the brakes on the motorcycle you just to the flip left. Off? 
Uh, he must have like spun out. No, they, they just slowed the guy down because I guess it's the right hand. So what is that? That's the rear tire. Uh, front the tire. Front? Oh shit! No, the guy did not flip My or anything. God. But yeah, that's, yeah, that seems like it. That's cheating. Was it a street race? No, it was like a professional race. It was like a I don't I don't know what like a Moto Two. Are there any rules against tampering with other people's? I'm sure. I, I'm, he got he got in trouble. Here it is. Banned for life. The fuck? So that oh, it's just like really a bad. pump. He doesn't even like hold it down. Then you see him. Mean, it's obviously like. Professional racers. Yeah. And yeah. so what happens? So he, I guess, uh, it looks was like that Nick he said was he's banned for life. Losing control. Wow. Bad decision. Yeah. That, I mean, that's crazy. Like you said, it, I mean, it could have hurt. Like that guy could have lost control. Who knows how fast they're going? Yeah. yeah. Could have like flipped over the bike and fucked himself up. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's that's fucking terrible. People are people are awful. Yeah, especially yep. like in a professional setting where it's like you know that you've like worked up to this point and you should respect other people who are also like in this competition with you. Yeah, yeah. and, and also dirty. it's going to be seen. Like, yeah, there, this is a camera no recorded camera. event. What are you yeah, thinking? That's so stupid. Um, yeah, that's I, I I can't believe it. People are awful. Unless there was a ra unless that was like the rules of the race where there are no rules. Oh, oh. oh that's what I was asking. Street racing, like, yeah, like, fast and where it's furious like, yeah, style. anything goes as long as you win. Yeah, you know. Could and you got to talk in that voice all the yeah. time. Hey, I'm Batman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are no rules. In which case, that would be like really clever. Oh yeah. If there are no rules, <laughs> it'd be clever. It would be. That would be cool. <laughs> then we'd be like, wow, how innovative. <laughs> I think the most innovative thing would be just like stick a tree branch in someone's spokes, Ooh, like yeah. right, like yeah. in the wheel. That's true. I that still want to know if anything happened to you in New York City. Like anything exciting? No. Just the way you answer that question makes me so intrigued. No, no, no. I'm, I mean, I I just went around. I mean, I, I caught up with some friends who live in New York, and did, you know. How long were you in New York? Just a weekend. Just Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Didn't go to any uh, sex shops or. No. Did you well, buy a smoothie at the airport? He has a smirk on his face. I know. <laughs> that's why I asked him there. last week on the podcast. I really didn't do it. There, uh, no, okay. it really wasn't. No, what you got to do is you got to keep asking him mundane questions and lull him into a false sense of yeah. security and then you spring it. Uh, I stayed. You see any boobs? Did I see boobs? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, uh, oh, uh, that's a yes. That's coy. See, that's a mundane question, but. Yeah. I don't know. How many boobs did you see? I don't know. Three. I don't keep. <laughs> I don't, three. That's a good <laughs> I don't know. You don't know? No, I mean I know, but I'm not gonna count, mm. or I'm not gonna like huh? it's tell. Chris doesn't doesn't uh, what's it called? Kiss and tell. He doesn't. He doesn't. So the maybe is tell. now a yes. Definitely yeah. yes. Like if I if, if I tell stories, I'll tell like a stories like you, like in the in the past. You're right. New York's yeah. not in the past. Yeah, like whenever it's like, oh yeah, there's this one time a while ago. where this happened. It's and, too too yeah, too recent. Too fresh. Yeah. Fresh. yeah. Just ask me again in a year. Okay. <laughs> okay, remember this. If we can, this, if we can mark that down. <laughs> podcast, podcast 561. Yep. <laughs> I'll title it now, Chris's New York Trip. It's not really that good as, I don't know. Okay. You're the one who built it up, dude. I No, she did. Mm -hmm. It's only because last, last week I asked you if anything happened in New York and you went, no. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> happened. No, yeah, yeah, there's a face. No. Okay. Do you play poker, Chris? Mm, I mean, not pr professionally. I don't know. What do you mean? Because you have like so many <laughs> talents. Yeah, like, I feel like so many <laughs> you do not have a poker face at all. Or maybe that's like his trick. Yeah. You think it's a tell. I'll play poker. You'll play poker? So Gus and I have a friend who's like becoming a pro poker player. Oh, yeah. And I think it's pretty fascinating. He told me that I should give it a try. But yeah. I don't know. Has he made a lot of money? Uh, Not a lot of, but he's starting to get to a point where he's starting to make money. Essentially, yeah, he uh, changed careers. He stopped what he was doing and decided he wanted to to give this a try. Interesting. And it's been it's it's been interesting keeping up with that. Like I can't imagine going all in on, yeah. a, on, a, on a change like that. Yeah, yeah, he plays online a lot. He said, oh, "Okay, like that's his practice." And then he goes to casinos just, for big tournaments. It just seems like there. I mean, there's just like gotta be a lot of people who say they win a lot of money, but they don't tell you about all the money they lose. You know what I mean? Like, oh, they're yeah. like, oh yeah, I'm a professional poker player. And they don't talk about like, oh yeah, I just well, also lost twenty thousand. I think it's also like when people make content online. Like, you see the people who've really made it, or you see people who like stream or put out content consistently. And there's, you know, there's a big gap. There's a lot of 
people who don't who don't make it yeah. or who don't um, ever really make money off of it. I still remember when we were the first time I we went to Vegas, first and only time uh, was with you, Gus and Alan, uh, and. I got like addicted to playing craps because you guys taught me how to do it, and it was just like the easiest game to play if you're just playing it simply with like yeah. the pass line and whatever. There was a guy there. I ended up staying at a table for like a couple hours, and there was a guy there who was just betting like ten thousand dollars at a time. Oh, I'm just mm -hmm. like what kind of lifestyle do you have? Where you're just like oh, ten thousand dollars? Oh yeah. And, like he, I don't know if he was winning or losing or what. He was just like throwing money around like crazy. First time I went to Vegas, I was with Gus too. Really? Me too. Ooh, that's, that's a weird. I've been in thing. Vegas with Gus twice, I and the first time you went was with Gus. Uh, yeah, oh, well, like Gus and Joel and I and Esther mm -hmm. and a few other friends of theirs all went there. Nice. I think I think there was a story recently you're talking about like the guy putting like ten thousand dollars at a time. I'm trying to find it here, but I think that there was a guy. Yeah, here it is. Who. Was in. He was somewhere. He was at a casino for uh, a poker tournament, and it was between the the poker tournament. He was like killing time, getting a drink, and playing video poker. And he hit a royal flush and won like two hundred fifty thousand dollars on a video poker machine. Wow, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. I think so. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. He, he says. Oh, here's his tweet. I was so pissed about busting in the ten thousand dollar tournament last night. I decided to let off some steam, and here he is. Like with the the royal flush and like the machines just uh, God you going pay nuts. Tax on that though in the states, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh no, it became two hundred thousand mm. dollars after taxes. Ah. No, no, it was two hundred thousand, not two hundred fifty thousand oh. dollars. Oh gosh, I I saw a guy. Yeah, there it is. Jackpot pay two hundred thousand dollars. Oh my god! Um, Your I saw a guy hit instantly. a royal flush once at the Bellagio uh, on a video poker machine. Like I was just I was just standing next to the guy at a bar waiting to get a drink, and uh, he just like clapped twice. And he said yes. And he called the bartender over, and they look, and they go, "All right, and they go, we gotta, we gotta call security." And they call security over, and like they took, they took him aside, and like security opens the machine up to like start printing off logs, I guess, to make sure he didn't fuck with the machine. Wow! Holy wow. shit! Yeah. So it it happens. It I don't think it happens very often. No, go gamble away all your money in Vegas. And I, and I think like if you if you're gonna win, like that guy who won two hundred thousand dollars, I think you have to bet like twenty bucks a hand, yeah, or like yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you got to put some money in. Damn. I haven't been to Vegas in a while. Me neither. Let's all go back yeah, to Vegas. Go. I haven't been since my wedding. I'm I'm really dying to go back. Well, I haven't been back since I think we did a big group trip like three or four years ago. We were supposed to go on a group trip to Vegas. Yeah, too. but then we ended up doing one like a couple months later. I thought Oh, wasn't it before? I thought you went to one before that. Or maybe it was the one before that. Maybe yeah. maybe it was like we had a group and we were doing going another group trip. Yeah. I don't you went, you also, I, Yeah, I remember, I remember the, that. It was the one where it was the one wherever like there's an RTA about it where it's like, like Kyle lost his wallet and got really angry and at oh, Miles well that was or like something. Miles and Aaron, yeah, were yeah, there together too. Yeah, it was a big group of us. I don't think I was on. That. No, I was definitely yeah. not there. That was a fun trip. That was a fun trip. All right, speaking of fun trips, let's. Uh, it's been a fun trip. Let's wrap this up. Oh, one. Th oh, what? Arizona Circle. Oh, right. it's coming out this week. Looking into the future. It's also uh, Funhouse Week. Fun, yeah, I think we're and in it's Funhouse fun Week. week. Right uh, you so, guys are doing like a live stream. Of yeah, yeah. So yeah, me and Blaine are gonna go out to LA, and uh, we're gonna do like a live stream with Funhouse and so a couple has, other things. So yes. Arizona Circle has not been released yet. This will be the premiere, mm -hmm. September nineteenth, August yes. first. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, you excited? Yeah, it's gonna be really fun. Yeah, it's really good. Thank I you. had nothing to do with it, but I'm really proud of it. <laughs> yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, you haven't? Yeah, it's yeah. really, it's it's great. It's really fun. Can't wait to see. All right. Well, watch Arizona Circle. <laughs> and hopefully you had fun at RTX London. Cheerio. We did. All right. Bye. <laughs>